It's time for the Bison Beat with KSJB Sports Director Kyle Dean and Voice of the Bison Jeff Colhane. Brought to you by First Class Aviation Maintenance and Flight School and FTC of Lisbon, North Dakota. Now, here's Kyle Dean and Jeff Colhane. Yes, once again, how's everybody doing here on your beautiful day in North Dakota? On Classic Country, AM 600 KSJB, we are streaming online at ksjbam.com. And on the phone with us is a guy that has three exciting games under his belt for the NDSU Bison, the voice of the Bison, Jeff Collane. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing today? Kyle, it's great to be back on with you. How are you? I'm doing very well, and uh, like you said, it's good to be back home, but that was a pretty fun trip this weekend, wasn't it? Oh, I mean, I, it doesn't get much better than, than that. Last weekend, I was joking around with people. I, I said it was the greatest football weekend ever last weekend <laughs> with the Bison winning that game at Iowa. The Vikings beat the Packers, Carson mm-hmm. Wentz, and the Eagles beat the Bears. Oh, and then yes. uh, Kyle Emanuel, who's on our show in Fargo, the Chargers beat the Jaguars, so he got a win on Sunday as well. You couldn't ask for much more as a football fan, I'll tell you that. No, not at all. It was pretty exciting all across all the divisions, nationally and college and all that. And I would have to say, uh, I would agree with you, perfect football weekend for everybody here in North Dakota and Minnesota and South Dakota and around the region, I would have to say. Yeah, it was great. I mean, you can't uh, dial it up much better than what we saw at Kinnick Stadium oh, yes. last weekend. I mean, the Bison went toe-to-toe with the 11th-ranked team in the FBS and the team that played in the Rose Bowl last season and beat them at their own game. Iowa's a physical football team, and North Dakota State uh, lined up, took it right at them. They did some nice things on both sides of the ball with uh, their schemes and uh, – it was one heck of a, of a performance and an amazing coaching performance by this staff. And you know the Bison have again been getting a lot of national recognition, but now it's even more so, not just because of Carson Wentz, but I think just because of this huge game that they had on Saturday versus Iowa. Well, it's a great combination. You know, Carson's off to a good start, and you, you, you have the win Saturday, and then he's playing on Monday Night Football, and Sean McDonough and, and John Gruden are talking about North Dakota State, and mm-hmm. there's a camera in Fargo as the game is being played live, and Bison fans are going wild. I mean, <laughs> it's almost a perfect storm of positivity right now for NDSU, and it's because of what they've accomplished, what they're doing, and uh, the success that they are having. And, you know, what? let's talk a little bit about that Iowa game, and it was a huge success. Uh, what was exactly the game plan and execution then for the NDSU Bison? And uh, I guess, did it work, the game plan? It must have because they won with a 23-21 win. Yeah, it definitely worked. You know, I think they, uh, they wanted to feel them out a little bit in the first half. You know, Iowa had success, uh, especially defensively against us, I think, in the second quarter. Um, and you saw a few wrinkles here and there. I, I thought it was uh, great of Tim Polisek in the score zone inside the five-yard line uh, to, to work the play action a lot more. That softened them up. It led to that uh, that big-time touchdown late in the fourth quarter from Easton Stick to Chase Morlock. Uh, and defensively, you know, the Bison were more, are more suited to play against a team like Iowa than they were versus Eastern Washington. And I'm not saying that that game against the Eagles was an easier challenge or a tougher challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, in talking to the coaches and talking to the players, uh, these guys felt more comfortable playing the way Iowa plays than to what Eastern Washington did uh, a couple of weekends ago. So that being said, the setup of it set up better for NDSU. And then Matt Ants let these guys be more aggressive. Um, you know, I think he gave them more freedom to get downhill and make plays. Uh, they got after C.J. Beathard. And, I, you know, holding a team like Iowa to negative seven yards rushing in the second half, you can't script that. Mm-hmm. So it was an amazing effort on both sides. I thought special teams played pretty well also. Jackson Coons punted very well. Did not let Desmond King insert himself into the ball game and the return game. And then Cam Peterson, of course, with a game winner. Uh, to walk that thing off, just you couldn't dial it up any better. And you were talking about the defense, of course, MJ Stumpf. He's a Harvey, North Dakota native. And uh, what? how did he feel after that? I mean, that was just amazing pickoff to go for a pick six. 
Well, I talked to him yesterday, and, he, you know, you can tell that uh, he's pretty excited. He's pretty proud about everything. He said he got a lot of phone calls and text messages from the folks in Harvey, his friends, his family. Um, his mother, of course, is what the one text message he looks at, and mm-hmm. uh, she texts him right away, and, and the one he uh, uh, can't, can't wait to see. So, you know, he talked about that play. He saw it happen the entire way. Um, he saw Pierre G. Tucker get off the edge like a – uh, like a bullet, and get around the corner and, and hit C.J. Beathard at the right time, and the ball popped in the air, and at that point he said he was almost like in slow motion. He said the ball wow. just sort of floated towards him, and he made the play and just took off for the end zone, and when he got into the end zone, he said, he goes, I didn't know, he goes, I felt like it was you know, so surreal, I, I wanted to I look back at the official to make sure that it, it actually counted. <laughs> so he just, he got in the end zone, and uh, that put the Bison on the board and gave NDSU, I think, the confidence and the break that they were looking for early in the football game. Um, yeah, I mean, just defensively, what an effort against that group and, and playing so physical. And uh, really, you could tell both sides of the ball put the Hawkeyes back on their heels as the game went along. And, you know, you talk to all the coaches and the players and the Bison football radio show that we play on here on Monday nights. And uh, did you get information on that two-point conversion that they went for? I mean, uh, what was the exact thought in that from the coach? Well, I think Chris Kleiman talked about it Monday night, uh, Kyle, and I think he just wanted to be the aggressor. I think he liked the way his offensive line was starting to move Iowa up front. Uh, He wanted to win the game. He didn't want to go to overtime again. I think he was tired of playing overtime games. Uh, he wanted to win the game, and he liked the way the game was being played. He mm-hmm. felt it was in uh, NDSU's favor. The momentum was on the Bison side. And um, he told Tim Polisek, he said, here's the deal. When we score on this possession, I want you to dial up your best two-point conversion play because we're going to go for two. Wow. So there was never any hesitation. There was never any second-guessing, even after the timeout that Iowa used when uh, the Bison lined up for a two-point conversion. So um, give Iowa credit. Uh, They had a great defensive plan against what the Bison wanted to run for that two-point conversion, and that's why it really broke down and didn't work. Um, They set it up perfectly and defended it to to a T. So uh, never was there any doubt that the Bison were going to go to two, according to Chris Kleiman, and, you know, it didn't work. But they still got it done. The defense had their backs and uh, went three and out, and they found a way to win the football game regardless. And now I got a question for you: is about the the atmosphere at Iowa. What was it like for both sides of the football? I mean, there was a lot of Bison's fan there, I believe. But what did it feel like when you were there? Well, I think according to Easton Stick, he told Chris Kleiman, he said in the first half they were having some issues with the noise. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's the largest crowd NDSU has ever played in front of in the history of Bison football, 70,585. So you're going to get some noise. But the way the game was played, Iowa never really mounted much momentum. So the crowd was never really a factor in the ball game because of how North Dakota State uh, played that game, and they really took him out of it. And re- honestly, towards the end of the game, Kyle, you could hear the the ten to twelve thousand Bison fans with the "Let's Go Bison" chant clear as day oh, wow. in uh, in Kinnick Stadium. It really took over the atmosphere in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. It was a, an unbelievable experience and a goosebump type of moment for folks wearing the green and gold. So. An awesome atmosphere for a college football game, just like on the scoreboard. Bison Nation took that thing over at the end. I got to love it that we travel so well across the nation. Jeff, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about injuries and homecoming week here on KSJB. Did you ever look to the skies and dream of flying an airplane? Quit dreaming and contact First Class Aviation to schedule your discovery flight, where a First Class instructor will take you up in one of their airplanes. Call 952-1515, 952-1515. Aircraft maintenance is also available. Just call to schedule your aircraft, and they offer aircraft rental, too. Owners are NDSU Bison team makers at First Class Aviation, Flight School, and Aircraft Maintenance at Jamestown Airport. Go Bison! Don't give up on your soybeans too early. Hi, I'm Darren Hefty with Hefty Seed Company. Far too often we see yield left on the table because either the growing season just wore people down or they simply were tired of spending more money. If a $5 investment turned into $10 to $40 in a month, would you do it? 
To find these opportunities, keep scouting your fields all the way until the soybeans start to turn yellow. There's a potential for a very nice crop. Don't leave yield on the table by giving up on your soybeans too early. Call 1-800-27-HEFTY for the answers to your agronomic questions. Fisher to snap. Davis will hold. This is for the win over the Iowa Hawkeyes at Kinnick Stadium. Good snap. Spot. Kick. On the way. The kick is up. It's good. And the Bison have done it again. The final. 23-21. Horns up. Hawkeyes down. And, of course, that was Jeff Collane with that call. And, Jeff, that has been all over TV stations and radio stations for that call, huh? <laughs> yeah, how about that? It really uh, it really resonated around the country. It's, it's such a great, uh, you know, a great thing for North Dakota State, the state of North Dakota, for Bison Nation. It was on SportsCenter. Mm-hmm. You know, it was on College Football Live and all the coverage Saturday on ESPN and even on you know, Monday, the Dan Patrick show had it on as the call of the day, and Colin Cowherd played it on his show on Monday. <laughs> so what a great thing for NDSU and Bison football. And a great thing for you, I would have to say, Jeff. That's just awesome. And now we've been talking about, of course, the Bison football team, and they've been relatively healthy. But uh, some key injury that happened here, Nick DeLuca, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, tough break and really sad for Nick. He's such a good person and an even better, you know, he's a great football player and um, you, your heart goes out to him. His shoulder uh, will require season ending surgery. Uh, had a torn labrum back there when it was all said and done and he just wanted to give it a go. Wanted to play with his teammates and I think he really wanted to play in this game, Kyle, and he played well and he was a big part of it in the middle of that defense and so he has undergone the surgery already. He's already had it. And uh, he, he reported, he tweeted via his Twitter page that mm-hmm. he is good, surgery is good, and rehab is, uh, begins soon. Uh, very confident that he will get the medical red shirt. And so the largest recruit for the class of 2017 for the Bison is Nick DeLuca. So uh, he will uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm guessing, will be back next year. But uh, unfortunately, his season this year is done with. Yeah, we hope him the best, and we hope to see him next year. And, uh, of course, it's almost homecoming for you guys. What do you expect for homecoming and, I guess, the next few games uh, for the last few minutes on this segment? Yeah, it's always a great atmosphere. It's all, it always means a lot, and you have a great matchup. You have Illinois State coming to town uh, next weekend. Uh, probably good for the Bison. They have a bye week to enjoy the win. And then, you know, come back down after enjoying it for a few days and preparing for another tough opponent. Now, it, you know, the gauntlet of the Missouri Valley Football Conference begins, Kyle, and North Dakota State has used both of their buys for mm-hmm. the uh, 2016 season and will play eight consecutive games. So uh, it's time to get focused in, time to get locked in, and the, uh, the second season starts. That's conference play. Uh, you can't uh, – I don't know how you can top the, the non-conference part of it, the first three games. My goodness. Um, but uh, another big opponent, another good team coming in. Illinois State beat Northwestern. They're 2-1 and one on the year. They stubbed their toe at home versus Eastern Illinois last weekend. But just like everybody else at the FCS level, the Redbirds will throw everything they can at the Bison, and uh, North Dakota State's going to have to be ready to play. And, of course, what time is that game, and I guess uh, what day it is? I think it's in October, correct? Yep, Saturday, October 1st, next Saturday, and it uh, kicks off at 1 p.m. at Gate City Bank Field at the Fargo Dome, and our coverage begins at 12.30 on the uh, Peterson Farm Seed Network across the state. All right, Jeff, well, before we go, any final thoughts about the Bison and, I guess, their upcoming rest of the schedule before we go? He's got a good football team again. They just continue to do it, Kyle. They, they find ways to win. It's what they do, and that's uh, what they've done so far to start this season. I don't uh, anticipate it being any different during Valley football play. All right. Well, once again, thank you very much, Jeff, for joining us. And uh, keep calling those games like you do because they're sure exciting on the radio, Jeff. Thanks, Kyle. They are a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, see you later, Jeff. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. That's, once again, Voice of the Bison, Jeff Collane, for today's Bison Beats. Every Wednesday, 2.30 to 2.45 on KSJB.